All right, we're gonna do a uh, CVT fluid exchange on a 2015 Subaru Forester. Let's go over the uh, tools needed. Of course, you're gonna need some CVT fluid. This is uh, five gallons worth right here. And uh, it's the AMSOIL CVT, which for the TR580 transmission, which is in this uh, 2.5 liter naturally aspirated Forester, the TR580 transmission is one of the transmissions that AMSOIL uh, claims that this fluid is compatible with. It also meets or exceeds the fluid requirements for the turbo version of CVT, the high torque orange fluid, which is actually more expensive OEM fluid um, than the uh, green or blue stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. We'll find out uh, after we get it in if it's going to work well. Uh, of course, you're going to need to uh, jack up your car. So you want a nice floor jack, some jack stands. You want a, uh, uh, one of these dealios to uh, a creeper to get uh, under your car easy. And uh, we're also going to use a fluid pump here. got this off of Amazon. I'll link it. Um, and I picked up from Home Depot some uh, some clear tubing. Uh, so it's half inch outer diameter, three eighths inch inner diameter, so that we can um, hook that up to the uh, CVT cooler. And that's where we're gonna drain from so we can try and get as much of the old fluid out as possible. Uh, the factory service manual the, uh, recommends that you don't mix different grades or brands of CVT fluid. So uh, if we're gonna put in a different spec fluid, uh, we should go ahead and uh, remove as much of it as possible. Um, I also picked up one of these Rubbermaid measuring quart containers, it goes up to eight quarts. So uh, we'll be able to uh, measure how much we're draining out of the pan. Um, we'll measure out how much we pump out later when we're doing the fluid exchange. Um, I got one of these uh, Blackstone oil analysis kits that we're going to send off. Uh, we're going to use one of these uh, turkey basters to, uh, what we'll do is we'll take a sample after we drain out the pan, we're going to take a sample from the middle of this container and send it off for analysis. Um, you're also going to want a regular set of gloves and then some of these nitrile gloves when you're dealing with the fluids. A couple other tools you're going to want to do this job. Um, it's a hammer, breaker bar, torque wrench, your hex bits, um, and you're going to want a uh, battery to hook up your uh, 12 volt pump to. That's to pump your fluid in. Uh, another alternative if you don't want to get the pump and a battery is you can use one of these uh, Lubermatic uh, quart pumps. This is really better for a differential uh, fluid change because there's less fluid in the differential. Um, I wouldn't recommend somebody pump five gallons with one of these. That's going to take you forever. So, uh, yeah, let's... Uh, oh, yeah, you're also going to want a uh, crush washer for your drain plug. So um, you can get this. Uh, I actually got this on Amazon, so I'll link, I'll link that too. I think it's the same crush washer that you use for oil changes so it's a few bucks okay so uh first thing you're going to want to do once you uh get you're going to get your car jacked up i like to jack it nice and high but do it safely um, and you're going to level it so you're going to put a level um, right along here and make sure you're nice and level and then you need to remove the uh the undercover so i uh placed it in the orientation that it is under the car here so so it's uh, just up under uh, this way on the on the it's, it runs along uh, right here right here you'll see it um, it'll, it'll look like this and uh, just uh, use a uh, regular socket to get those off 12 mil 12 millimeter the first thing you want to do is off right here okay I got it I got it cracked open uh, but I can't 
pull it off uh, yet. So you just got to get that crack loose. Just then, so you uh, know that it's crap. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and hand me the bucket. So it's time to uh, pull that drain plug out. Just a little bit to get it kind of loosened up a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, this is going to be hot stuff. So I'm going to... Got to be really careful here. Not to splash that in your face. Wear goggles. Right. Here we go. It's definitely dark. So we'll measure here how much we drain out. Looks like six and a half, almost seven quarts have drained out. We'll just let that keep going. And while that drains, we'll go set up the other stuff. Okay, so while we're uh, waiting for that pan to finish draining, we're going to uh, go ahead and clean up this drain plug. You going to move the uh, washer off there too? Pretty dirty. I got like, crush washers off there. Let's clean it up. There's no, magnet on, uh, there's no magnet on this one. The magnet's inside the pan, so we're just going to leave that and hope that there's not too many shavings overwhelming that magnet. It, that shouldn't be an issue because the magnet catches it and the strainer also, also catches all that stuff before it ever makes it up into the actual transmission. So. Let's uh, pray and hope that's what the case is. I might do a video down the road of a complete hand drop and a strainer replacement, but I'm not going to do that today. Here's our uh, washer. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, no, this washer is definitely no bueno. Uh, there's two sides. This washer uh, has a rounded side and more of a flat side. You put the flat side up. The flat side facing the pan so so when it crushes down the the rounded side is on the plug plug squishes that so that's ready to reinstall we'll, we'll get under the car and put the plug back in so uh, we have the factory service manual here it shows to uh, torque the uh, drain plug with 23 foot pounds so that's what we'll torque it at all right we're going to take a sample uh, of uh, the fluid we drained and we're going to send it off to the lab. I'm just going to kind of stir it around a little bit. Make sure we're getting a and then I'm going to draw it right from the middle. Oh, okay. Whew. And then in it goes. I need a little bit more. That should be good, just in case they need more, a little bit more in there. Okay, we got our sample. We drained uh, almost seven quarts out of here. Uh, looks like we drained like 6.7 uh, 6 maybe, 6.7 quarts drained out of there, which is right about how much uh, we should have. And we'll do the paper towel test here to just kind of measure the integrity. And uh, yeah, actually, it doesn't look like it was destroyed. Um, so, I mean, it's it's definitely still viable. Um, uh, if it was still really black when I pulled it out, then that would mean you have a problem. That means you waited too long. Um, 
looks like uh, you know it needed to be done. Uh, I have a hundred thousand miles on this car, so um, yeah, it actually looks a little bit better than the differential fluid. So we're getting the uh, pump ready here. Uh, we have those lines hooked up, and uh, what we're going to do is um, we're going to prime it first using that hand pump that we have. We just hooked it up. It just happened to fit into that uh, line nicely, so open that, open up the. Okay, so uh, take two on the uh, pump test here. We had a little issue. There was some air in the line for some reason, but now that we have the pump primed. Uh, I don't think it's a problem now, so um, here's our, just to demonstrate how fast this pumps. You can... Okay, so we're going to remove... We're gonna remove this uh, fill plug now. Whoop! <laughs> Don't drop it like I did. Okay. That's pretty clean. Gasket was stuck on it. So don't lose your gasket unless you're replacing the fill fill plug gasket. All right, we're gonna hook up the uh, pump to it now. It'll kind of tell you how much you're pumping in as you do this. So we should be able to get four quarts back in and then stop it after, you know, not long after that. So here we go. This is good uh, to kind of uh, get practice at because we don't want this to happen while we're, uh... oh, 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 there we're good. Okay. Perfect. Fill plug? The, well, it's a fill plug and a check plug because on um, these, that's where you get it. So we'll let that drain a little bit more so that when we open this fill plug later, we don't get blasted. So uh, now we're going to tap into the CVT cooler and uh, that's going to be located um, if you're facing uh, facing your car this way it's going to be right in here so you can kind of let me get a light you know, get the light down here so uh, there's your CVT cooler you can see that big hose is your coolant line and then that little hose to the left here. Let me, let me free up my other hand so I can show you better what's going on. Get the lighting in here. Sorry, I'm an amateur cameraman. So uh, this, this right here is your uh, coolant line. And then this is the outlet hose on your CVT cooler. So you're gonna to want to disconnect that one. Uh, there's a uh, there's a hose clamp down there that hooks into the CVT. You can pull that off, uh, and that's where we can hook into it. There we go. Woo! Oh, oh. It's still even on there. It's not clamped in now, but. There we go. Got that off there. So, uh, what we'll do is, let me go get my other hose here. We're going to hook an extension onto this. Just like that. 
and that comes that 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 piece comes with the pump that I ordered on Amazon so probably won't have any issues but just to be safe we can go ahead and clamp that back on there far there we go just like that now we're secured so now we have our drain line hooked up and this is where the uh, CVT is gonna pump the fluid out and we'll pump it into uh, a bucket monitor how much we're pumping Okay, so we have our uh, line hooked up here. Here's the outlet hose on the CVT cooler, and it just uh, follows this way into a uh, drain pail here. Put that on top so it wouldn't It's not going to splash. It won't. Um, so we're going to just, uh, yeah, the, our, our extension's hooked on here, and we're going to drain right out into here. And then we move the pump down here uh, ground level, um, to uh, make it pump more efficiently because if you have the elevation changed too much that's when we've been running into problems and then uh, under here we uh, have our line hooked in right there to the uh, fill the fill hole so uh, we'll be monitoring that while pumping in we're gonna monitor our fluid levels here as we drain and uh, make sure we're pumping enough in uh, as we drain here. So, here we go. Okay, fire it up. There we go, we got the black fluid coming out on that side. Yeah, go ahead and uh, shut it off. Shut off the engine. Go ahead and turn it back on. Okay, yeah, it's running out now. Go ahead and start it up. Alright, we're full here. Go ahead and shut off the engine. Shut it off. Yeah, that looks a lot better now. This, I mean, it's not perfectly clean, but... Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. quite a bit out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we can do a comparison here. Um, do a comparison. So that's that's our what we flushed out, and this is what the line looks like. So that's what's coming out of the cooler, the CVT right now, and then this is what our uh, fresh stuff looks like so it's not quite there but uh, 
let's uh, let's get this drained, and then we'll. Uh... Okay, we're ready for round two here. We're gonna uh, start the engine up shortly here. You don't want uh, you don't want to run out of fluid. I think there. we're all. Oh, it's I think we're fluid, right. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. I'm watching it. Okay. Uh, Here's a little more. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you, help. Thank you, helper. <laughs> so uh, th this is uh, what the uh, return line looks like now from uh, from our uh, CVT. So this is at this is what the fluid looks like after it's ran through the whole CVT, and this is what it looks like when it's going in. So it's actually looking pretty damn good comparing. You know, this is how <laughs> you know this is what it was look like looking like while we were draining it. So. Um, I think we we removed a lot of contaminants from uh, that transmission right now. Okay, so one thing that I noticed um, after doing the flush is that uh, where I uh, disconnected the outlet, the CVT fluid outlet, so you can see that uh, nipple down there. Um, I think what happened was when we when we were running that there was a, uh, it, there must be a little bit of pressure or something. It uh, dribbled out uh, some CVT fluid, and if you notice down there, our uh, exhaust system is right under it. So you have uh, flammable CVT fluid uh, that's sitting right on that exhaust. So that uh, clearly needs to be cleaned off uh, before you you know take it back out. I mean, or uh, you know you'll get smoke and or potentially a fire. So just be aware of that. Uh, so when I got all the fluid back in and. Uh, ran the OBD uh, reader app to check the CVT fluid temperature uh, was still a little too high in temperature so I had to uh, cool it down with the swamp fan okay we're uh, we got this big swamp fan blowing at my car so hopefully that'll cool things down faster because I'm impatient after about an hour and a half uh, this is what I ended up uh, getting the temperature down to 97 degrees and that's when I uh, added fluid back in uh, to uh, top it off. So the temperature was slowly rising. Um, it was within the ideal temperature range. Um, so that's why it continued to pour out because the fluid was expanding. So at that point I knew I was pretty much at the exact uh, CVT fluid level that I needed to be at. So that's when I uh, put the uh, fill plug back in and torqued it down to 37 foot-pounds. Uh, just use the uh, torque wrench there until it clicked. And we were done. Okay, we have uh, the engine on. Uh, there's no check engine lights or CVT lights. That's a good thing. Um, we'll go here and check, uh, check where we hooked in. Make sure that didn't pop off or anything. Nope, that's looking fine. No, no fluid catching on fire or anything. So, uh, it looks like I'm all wrapped up here. The only thing left to do is uh, put the uh, cover, the undercover, back on. That's just a few bolts. Uh, clean up my huge mess. So I, I used, uh, I want to say like 18 quarts probably. To do this exchange so I'm definitely glad that I got uh, uh, five gallons of that uh, CVT fluid um, you could probably not flush as much as I did but because my transmission was so dirty uh, it needed it so uh, I'll do one last check of the line that I disconnect down here and make sure that's uh, take it for a test drive so okay we're on a uh, road test and uh, 
everything feels normal, feels good. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the uh, shifting uh, between gears, that felt uh, a lot smoother now, less clunky. So uh, maybe a, uh, the valve body is, is running cleaner now. But uh, yeah, everything seems to be uh, doing great. So uh, yeah, thanks again for watching.